So I'm going to be showing you how to get Redream set up as quickly as possible and what all the different graphics options look like. And towards the end of the video, I'm going to be showing you those features that are locked behind that $6 payment wall. And irrespective of how you feel about this one, I'm going to show you exactly what you're getting for your money. But we are going to be getting everything set up without paying for it first. So let's just get into it. Of course, you want to grab the emulator first, which you can do so from the official Redream website. And I'll put a link for this in the description below. I do not recommend downloading the stable releases from five years ago. I recommend downloading the most recent development build. Once you've got that downloaded, obviously you want to unzip it like I've already done here. Then just open up the folder and launch the solitary exe and wait for it to load up. Now the very first thing that we need to do here is point the emulator to where our games are located. So click on this games library button Find your Sega Dreamcast game folder, wherever it may be, and then just add it. And then all of your games should appear here. And this is where you're launching them from. If we move on to this library option, we can add additional folder paths. So if you've got your Sega Dreamcast games in different folders for whatever reason, you can add them here. The saves option allows you to manage the memory cards for all four of the ports. You can save and export them or delete them. Now sorting out your controllers for this emulator is really easy. All you need to do is select the port that you want to configure for and then select your input device. Any connected controllers should appear here. So I'm going to select my X input controller and this should automatically bind all of these inputs exactly how you want them to be. Although you can rebind them if you want or need to. Now you may remember the Dreamcast had a keyboard input device for games like Typing of the Dead and a light gun for games like House of the Dead. And we can select these with the input device. As you can see, we've got keyboard and light gun. When we select keyboard, we can only rebind these options because it already knows where all of the actual letters are on your keyboard. When we select this to light gun, it automatically binds all of the movement and everything to your mouse. Now with the light gun games, unfortunately, you can't use two mice or two light guns. You can use two controllers for two players, but you can only use one mouse for one player with light gun games. And this is just a limitation of the emulator. If you are using proper light guns, I'd recommend using Flycast instead because Redream doesn't use raw input. Now we're all done with inputs, we can move on to options. And windowed mode is basically full screen mode. I'd recommend borderless full screen unless you've got a preference. Renderer mode will have an impact on your performance. HLE per strip is rendering everything per strip and as a result is much kinder on your performance. However, you can potentially see the most amount of rendering issues when you're using this one. HLE per pixel is rendering everything per pixel and does mitigate those issues that you can see with per strip and it is a little bit more accurate. LLE which stands for low level emulation aka software mode. Now software mode is used by purists that want to keep the original resolution and they want the best possible accuracy. Software mode by its very nature is the most accurate and compatible and you are going to see the least amount of issues with it. But because it's using your CPU for all instructions, it is hugely performance costly. Only to be used if you have no intention of upscaling and you have a CPU to be able to run it. Most of us are not going to be using this and I recommend using per pixel by default if your performance can hack it. If not, just use per strip. With the game aspect ratios, for the most part, you should be using 4x3. 16x9 will take that 4x3 image and stretch it into 16x9. And stretch will simply take that image and stretch it to your window size or your monitor if it's bigger than 16x9. Frame skip can come in handy if your performance isn't that good and you're dropping frames. I recommend having this off and only turning it onto auto if you need it. Frame rate counter will add a frame rate counter and vertical sync will stop any screen tearing. The audio options and system options you get to leave at default, but just make sure that cable is set to VGA as that gives the best possible output. When you start a game and then press escape to go to the redream menu, you get some different options appear in the bottom left hand corner. So we can save a state if we want to, we can change a disc and restart the game. But we've also got cheats here. You've got your normal cheats that you'd normally expect to find here, but we've also got some widescreen cheats. These are essentially hacking anamorphic 16x9, an attempt to draw everything in all the way to the edge of the screen without stretching or distorting the image. When they work, they work really well, but you are going to see some games that are going to have some pop in. Now you may want to save some settings for a game specifically, like setting the light gun for the light gun games. To be able to do that, all you need to do is turn custom config on. Now any changes that we make to these options will be made to this game specifically. And after you've done that, just go back to now playing and resume your game. Now that we've covered all of these options without paying for anything, I'm going to show you the two options that you get in addition for paying that $6. 
The first of which is being able to increase your resolution with game resolution. This does arguably make your games look better. So what I'm going to do is have the original resolution, the free one, on the left, and I'm going to cycle through the upscale resolutions on the right to give you an idea of exactly what you're paying for. The second function that you're paying for are multiple save states. With the free version, you can only have one, and with the paid version, as you can see, you can have up to five. And honestly, I feel like they've added this to the paid stuff to try and pad it out and justify that $6. For me personally, I only ever use one save state at a time, and if I need to use multiple, I generally manage it myself. On its own, this is not worth the $6, but with the internal resolution thing, maybe. I suppose the real question is, how do I feel after spending that $6? And my honest answer is indifference. I don't think it's the best $6 I've ever spent, but I don't feel completely stiffed at the same time. And whether or not those additional features are actually worth it or not is really up to you. And to be completely honest, you're gonna do just fine with the free version of Redream, especially if you're a casual user. But if you are a heavy user and you like to get nitty gritty with all of your settings, use Flycast instead. There we go, that was my quick setup guide for Redream and my opinion on it. And check out the channel for other full setup guides and graphics guides. And if you liked today's video, slam me a thumbs up. And if you wanna keep up to date, you know what to do. And apart from that, go play some games. Adios.